If I was a chief, I would be um, concerned and aroused at the same time. Holy shit. The cold white light from the screen is casting on her face, revealing a horrifying green hue. The light in her eye fades away again. But taken aback, the girl you know is a greenhorn who left a campus not long ago. How did she, this that innocent girl suddenly become... You, you're the person behind call at 3 a.m. Now this must be... What have you done? Are you controlling her? The person on the screen smiles, lifting the corner of her mouth without showing her teeth. Control her? <laughs> Can one control oneself? I've always been her, and she's always been me. She may have just forgotten it, along with her voice. 11 voice merges with the voice on the screen, getting a premonition, you instinctively turn around only to see 11 fading in front of you. I mean, if it's part of her, can't we just use shackles on her and make her like, uh, bound? She melts and floats away like the silhouette of a sound wave emitting, entering the endless screen, all the 11 are smiling down at you. Her eyes, her mouth, her hands, her heart, they're all watching you. You look around and find that the entrance you came in through has disappeared, blending into the real, uh, dark walls. All you can now do is cross those screens and enter this unknown building. On the check-in counter next to you, a black walkie-talkie flashes a few times, apparently receiving an incoming message. You shoot at a glance, suppressing your anger. You walk to the counter, pick it up, th pick up the walkie-talkie. Press the button on its side. After a few crackles of radio signals, you hear a familiar voice. Congratulations! You've helped Eleven to find her own voice. No, the truth of this world has not been revealed. That's not her voice. Rather, it's not the voice she wants, am I right? <laughs> How can that be? This is her dream. You slam the walkie-talkie on the counter. The signal pauses for a moment, then comes back sharp over the cacophony of noise. She wants to be better. To be perfect. Just like the person in her dreams. But that's the product. The perfect product in the boss's eyes. Who's the boss? Thank you for making her. The perfect product. He's basically, she's basically saying that the conversation they were having outside where he's like, you can do this, you can do that. He was trying to say that you can chase after your dreams. If you try hard enough, you will get there. But she turned it around as in, uh, you know, she will be the, she will receive, you know, achieve her dream when she conforms. Okay, combat it is. And that's that, victory. Let's move on to the next one, which is we're 22 out of 25. We're almost there. Perfect product. After and hopefully there's only a third world. Either this game ends here, and a third world. I really hope it actually isn't going for the seven deadly sins type of beat, and it is going to be like seven worlds. I will go insane. Hopefully three is the max. Perfect product. After entering the TV station, Eleven falls into a trap, gets absorbed at the mysterious voice, and becomes the so-called perfect product. You chase after the mastermind behind all this anger, swearing to get Eleven back. Now he gets pissed off when his girls are hurt, and the black walkie-talkie go finally goes dead, having been smashed into scrap metal by you. You drop it and return to the countless streams, staring hard at them, trying to swat Eleven. But every Eleven on the screen repeats the same words and turns a face at the same angle, as if it's all been programmed. Eleven, where are you? Tell me, just give me a direction, I'll find you. Eleven on the screen smiles at you, showing herself off at all angles. For directions, please proceed to the information desk on the second floor. I will provide you with multiple answers. Now a door with an on-ear sign lights up on, light, light up on it opens. What? Then a door with an on-air sign lights up, on it opens, seemingly inviting you in. What a weird sentence. You take another look at Eleven on the screen, she's still smiling, the record player software beside her on the right stubbornly spinning. 
Ooh, a liminal space. You know what this reminds me of? If there were less items in this scene, I would say this is like, um, back rooms. The middle path of the walking is like not synced to the top, which is odd. I mean, I don't have OCD, so I don't really mind. I don't really care, but it is something that I observed. It also kind of looks like the office from Control a little bit and from Stanley's Parable. Uh, the office and the building are all lit up, but there's no one around. The map hanging on the entrance of the floor like a broken channel guide flickers with noise and error signals. So where exa exactly is this information desk? Ah, there it is. Oh, she's wearing a red... What is, is... Is that connected to the... That must be connected to the dress. It can't be that she's wearing a dress that ends at her waist and that is like bra like it's so weird but it, it looks fucking good as if you're a question the malfunction map suddenly displays on screen displays an image through her clothes and hair cells are different you can still recognize the woman on the map it's 11. the information desk is on your left just keep going straight and you'll find it 11 i can recognize you if you've changed your clothes thank you for your compliment my attire hairstyle and makeup all serve to suit your taste i hope you like them wait is she profiling us like a fucking amazon and dressing up and with that 11 on the map smiles at you and disappears into the noise under the yellowish lights in the corridor the passage on the left extends forward interrupted by the door of several doors of several rooms you step forward and suddenly hear the noise of radio waves and a sound you've been Hearing since arriving in this world in this very corridor. Thank you for tuning in to today's news, where I'll be bringing you the latest news happening every minute. A room on the side of the corridor lights up light. Inside is a in a light colored uniform with her hair tied up neatly. A host low looks exactly like Eleven sits in front of a green screen recording a news program. You don't like my hairstyle and makeup today? No problem. If it's your request, I'll change them immediately. It's funny that I kind of shut off the screen for like taking the thumbnail, but uh, remove the HUD. But what happened is like, I can't even understand what she's saying if I don't have the subtitles. Like they have put too much uh, like editing on her voice. I can't understand. Maybe it's the fact that she's inside of a studio booth that we can't really hear properly. The Eleven grabs her heels to pull off the whole thing around her neck, swaps it for another one under the green screen. This time she has shoulder length hair, looking sweet and innocent. Thanks for pointing out my mistake. I'm still unable to satisfy everyone's needs all at once. I'm not a qualified host, a qualified product. How is that even possible to satisfy everyone's need at the same time? Through the small window in the door, you can barely see Eleven sitting in front of the green screen with a stiff smile. Why the music go loud? Uh, sitting in front of a stiff green screen with a stiff smile that was one of non existent voices. Please don't them. Ooh, three different expressions, huh? The sound from the room on the other side drowns at the ending of the news. Through the small window, you see a row of eleven standing there, still smiling. As always, camera flash going off in her eyes. The feel total the feel total different, but Looks identical as the 11th new at the same time. Hello. Welcome back to Call at the Air. I'm your host, Laughing. A sound that legend. Yes, you understand me. It's perfect. I am indeed the Call Lady. It's me. Every word is just as I say, and time is the only success. Yes. I will follow your perception and try to become her. Your happiness is what I desire. 
Expertise and responsiveness, and the purpose of loving acceptance. In the last room, sitting in front of the microphone, Eleven lifts her head and looks straight at you by the door. 